Welcome to this service of virtual Evensong. Now, if Evensong suggests to you old maids peddling along leafy lanes to medieval churches, the medieval churches are locked, the leafy lanes are empty, and the old maids are probably in quarantine. Daily experiences the new normal in these extraordinary circumstances. So Evensong comes to you through the medium of technology and thus unites musicians and readers and worshippers in all sorts of different places and circumstances and is very much in the spirit of Psalm 133 at the heart of this evening's service which observes how good and pleasant it is when people dwell together 
in unity. Not only good and pleasant, I'd argue, but also a source of resilience and endurance as we together uh, go through this extraordinary experience of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the Rodolphus Foundation would like to thank various people for making this happen this evening. The Friends of Cathedral Music, uh, choralevensong.org for their support and their encouragement. We'd also like to thank Sir Tim Berners-Lee for inventing the World Wide Web, which allows us to come together in such a creative way. In that, we rejoice greatly. We rejoice greatly, too, in Archbishop Thomas Cranmer's greatest work, The Book of Common Prayer, and Miles Coverdale for his translation of the Psalms therein. Look how good and pleasant it is when people dwell together in unity. The Book of Psalms is the prayer book of the Bible. Within its 150 prayers, we find honest, emotional and heartfelt petitions to God. Some are urgent and some are contemplative. The Psalms are timeless. People throughout history have experienced pressure, separation, anxiety and isolation from loved ones and loved lands. The Psalms articulate where we are now joyfully, sorrowfully and gloriously. Embodied, they are luminous and hopeful in one greater than ourselves. Psalm 126 speaks of desire and confidence that God never leaves us in the ebb and flow of life's fortunes. And Psalm 133 assures us that we come to the Lord in unity, unifying as one people from wherever we are, on one journey, the journey which ultimately ends in us being together for all time. A quote from Psalm 133, see how good and how pleasant it is when people live together in unity. That is where the Lord has decreed peace and life for evermore. When the Lord's turned again, the captivity of Zion. Then were we like unto them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with joy. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. Yea, the Lord hath done great things for us already. Whereof we rejoice. Turn our captivity, O Lord, as the rivers in the south, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that now goeth on his way weeping, and beareth forth good seed, shall doubtless come again with joy and bring his sheaves with him. Look how good and pleasant it is together in unity. It is as rare as the fine oil poured on Aaron's head, which flows down to his beard and his garments. It is as precious as the refreshing dew of Aaron, which descends upon Mount Sion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing and life forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and 
From 1 Samuel chapter 17. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armour, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armour, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand, and chose him five smooth pebbles out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Then the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine Goliath looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine Goliath said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hastened and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead. They fled.
Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. I invite you to join with me in saying the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen.
The anthem is I Was Glad by Sir Hubert Parry, and we're delighted to welcome Voches 8 to this virtual Evensong, where they'll be singing the semi-chorus section of the anthem. Parry wrote I Was Glad for the coronation of Edward VII in 1902, although that famous soaring organ introduction wasn't in fact added until the coronation of George V some eight years later. The words are taken from Psalm 122, and they describe pilgrims arriving at the temple in Jerusalem from all corners of Israel and celebrating the joy of unity they feel on arriving and meeting people from other tribes for the first and quite probably last time. It was for most of them their only visit to the temple. The words, our feet shall stand, can also translate as our feet now stand. Our feet now stand in thy gates, O Jerusalem, which feels like an expression of that joy we all feel when we've anticipated a great journey or visit and can't quite believe that it's now actually happening. The pilgrimage was an autumn festival, and I'd love to think that this psalm will express our feelings when we emerge from the current crisis and can all sing together once again. And let's hope that the joy and unity which we find then may be preserved for a long, long time to come.
Welcome, wherever you are, to join with me now in a moment's stillness and quietness, during which three of the many people who have contributed to this virtual choral evensong will lead us in three beautiful prayers. And although these prayers are drawn from the Christian tradition, each of them has for centuries spoken to people of all spiritual and cultural traditions and movements. These prayers will be prayed for us by three people from the London borough of Hackney. And like the city of Jerusalem, Hackney is a borough which is at unity in itself. As with the city of Jerusalem, the tribes have been going up to Hackney for centuries, staying a while and then often moving on, usually leaving a bit of their richness behind them when they go. And this movement has brought in its wake a living legacy of diversity, out of which has grown a culture of cohesion, for people do indeed dwell together in unity and rejoice in doing so. Hackney folk know just how precious a thing this unity is. We see its strength and value in troubled times. We are aware of the need to protect it and preserve it, as I'm sure you are too. But perhaps most important of all, we know how important it is to embody this unity. And Renasha, Rochelle and Emile, together representing the three Abrahamic faiths, will do exactly that by praying these prayers for us now. So let us be still and know that God is God. Let us pray. O oh God, make us instruments of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is sickness, healing. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening, into the house and gate of heaven. To enter into that gate and dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light. No noise, nor silence, but one equal music. No fears, nor hopes, but one equal possession. No ends, nor beginnings, but one equal eternity. In the habitations of thy majesty and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord 
to make our common supplications unto thee. And dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant them their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them. Granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Prevent us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. On behalf of everyone who has played a part in this virtual choral evensong, I invite you now, wherever in the world you may be, to join with us in this great endeavour by singing what is arguably the finest hymn of the 20th century. The tune was written by the composer Herbert Howells, who christened it Michael in memory of his young son of the same name. The words are those of the poet Robert Bridges. All my hope on God is founded. which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you 
and remain with you this day and evermore. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you. 